Greg Power, Fisheries Division Chief with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Walleye fishing in 2023 was, for sure, during the open water season, the best ever. I mean, it's incredible how many calls, how many, very few complaints, but a lot of positive things were said about the walleye fishing in North Dakota. And it wasn't any one water, you know, that, that's what was super neat about it. It was pretty much throughout the state, all, in particular our new walleye uh, prairie lakes, they really put out well for the walleye and then and then the big three, Sakakwea had another excellent year. Uh, Devil's Lake was solid throughout into fall and Hawaii was a little surprising. It was probably a little better than expected. Again, the big three, you know, that they've been our walleye fisheries for 50 years. So, they, I mean, what, what makes them work is water. <laughs> and we've had decent water. Missouri River, you know, there's a lot of concern about water levels the last two years, but thankfully we were a little higher than expected. And in the walleye fishery, we still have a lot of, Oahe is a walleye factory. It reproduces, it's our only truly self-sustaining walleye fishery in the state. So there's plenty of walleye all the time in Oahe. But Sakak, we have had excellent stocking results for the last 10, 20 years. And good natural tree production, same thing with Devil's Lake. Um, just a lot of success in the stocking because we've got good water and good forage. And then the prairie lakes, of course, you know, we started from scratch. Uh, most of them initially were pike and perch lakes, but in time they evolved into walleye, started stocking walleye. And uh, it's the history of our walleye stocking is why they are what they are. I should also note, note though, what's kind of cool is that in 2023, we've never seen so much natural reproduction now in these new prairie lakes. And it's substantial in some cases. So uh, it's possible in a few years, some of these lakes are gonna be self-sustaining walleye fisheries. So that's pretty, pretty impressive. First part is the stocking program. And we need the hatcheries. Again, North Dakota does not have a state fish hatchery. We have the two federal hatcheries in Valley City and Garrison. And they have, and Garrison in particular, has a long, long history of incredible production of pike and in, and in particular walleye. And so we've been able to stock, you know, 8 to 12, pushing 13 million walleye fingerling in our lakes for the last 10 plus years. So thank God we have, if we didn't have that tool, it wouldn't be anything like it is today. And then, yeah, now we're upwards in that neighborhood of 400 fishing, 450 fishing waters in the state. Not all of them, but you know, over half of them for sure have boat ramps. And all the infrastructure that goes in you know, play there, you gotta have parking lots and fishing docks, in some cases fishing piers, toilets, fish cleaning stations. So uh, we're still doing a lot of catch up on the infrastructure part of it. We have a lot of partners, the counties, park boards, water boards, uh, wildlife clubs, but uh, the, the list is long when it comes to the development program and the needs out there. The good news was here last year, we did some internal restructuring, so to speak. And we have two, we have two field crews now. So we have four people full time that can attend to all the needs out there with the boat ramps. You know, knock on wood this upcoming winter, it's beyond our pay grade for sure, what mother nature has in mind. But uh, hopefully we don't have a repeat of last year that we have better access. Uh, for the most part, our lakes are in good shape, the walleye lakes in particular, the prairie lakes. So it should be a good winter of fishing. Uh, absolutely going into, you know what was really neat? And for biologists, we've said this for a very long time too, but our biologists, we get a lot more excited when we see eight inch walleye than eight pound walleye, because that is the future, the eight inch walleye. And we're seeing a lot of that. So uh, as good as fishing is today, we still see a lot of young, younger year classes coming up. So again, the, uh, so in, in fact, Sakakwea, for example, second highest on record for uh, young of the year walleye this fall. So it's, the walleye fishery is gonna be around for a while. You know, we stock pike and walleye, do some trap and transport with some of the panfish, bluegill, uh, yellow perch, of course. We have a list, you know, there's seven, eight different species, nine species, I believe, that we stocked. But we did have a couple ones we've never stocked before in North Dakota's history. One was tiger trout coming from the state of Wyoming. Put them in just a couple lakes. 
Uh, they're a little bit different than browns or rainbows and we're trying to get a better yield to the angler. So we'll see, we've got to give them a few years and see what happens, see if we potentially could stock more lakes with more of them. And then also the really neat one was Lake Sturgeon. Uh, it's a native fish species in the Red River and some of its uh, tribs that run into the Red. So for the first time ever, North Dakota stocked uh, Lake Sturgeon up the Pimpinel River in hopes, and this is gonna take, it's almost, you know, decades, but it takes a long time, but in hopes that someday that it will provide, that we'll see some adults in Minnesota's had great success on the Minnesota side of the Red River with a lot of their tributaries and the Pimina has a lot of the habitat that's needed. So we'll see here in another 10, 20 years. Well, you know, again, we're riding such a high with, with uh, walleye in the state right now. And then if you go back five, 10, 15 years ago, it's pike and perch. Uh, those lakes are not at probably as good as they were, are, you know, looking forward. We have fewer good perch quality lakes out there, but we'll still have pretty good, pretty good pike populations throughout most of the state. Uh, smallmouth bass, they're off the charts. They're about right there with walleye. They don't get much attention at all compared to walleye, but smallmouth bass populations are pretty incredible in most of our lakes that have smallmouth bass in them. Probably the disappointing one is largemouth bass, and that's been the real challenge. Uh, they've kind of dwindled in the wrong direction, and we're having some really ch big challenges getting fingerling, get stocking the lakes that need to be stocked. So that's probably the only downside when you look at the fishery resource in North Dakota is what's happened to the largemouth bass populations. But by and large, our trout lakes are good. Uh, we're, we're in good shape. Uh, a and S aquatic nuisance species, we don't like to talk about it, but it's a real, real threat. Uh, we're seeing serious issues in other states and provinces. Uh, this year, there's some concerns with quagga mussel, a cousin to the zebra mussel in some of the western states. They're finding them where they shouldn't be, and they're gonna cause some really long-term serious impacts to not just to the resource, the fishing resource, but to industry, you know, pipelines, that sort of thing. North Dakota, we've been we do have zebra mussel in a handful of lakes. And the good news is the last two years, we have not found any new infestations of zebra mussels in any waters. And we haven't found anything new. Uh, uh, curly leaf pondweed, some of the other aquatic nuisance species out there. So we've been, that's been the very good news is it's the same old, same old for North Dakota. But the concerns and threats are real. and. Uh, you know, we ask once again from the public, especially the fishing public and the boating public, just to simply comply with this couple easy, uh, s simple regulations. And if everybody does their part, we really do. You may never eliminate the threat, but you certainly could reduce the threat greatly. Yeah, you know, you'd hope with the, with the great fishing that we have in North Dakota that you'd have a lot more participation. Uh, the reality is our license sales have been fairly stagnant. It's, it's plateaued off. We're not seeing a lot more new people. The ones that do fish in particular, those that have boats, uh, they're fishing more. I mean, the fishing's good. They, they're chasing walleye across the state, but we're not seeing a lot of new interest yet. Uh, our focus the last maybe 10 years is developing community fisheries. And uh, if we can stock some of these small ponds in, in, in the urban areas in particular, maybe uh, we can get people, kids, you know, interested in fishing and that'll be a gateway to, to fish in North Dakota forever. Oh, the, yeah, the future, you know, today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, probably for the next five plus years at least, our fishing in North Dakota looks really positive. As long as we have the water, I think the fish will be there.